What's up y'all, Ben Vista the Heartland Maker here. Today, we're gonna continue the wood glass project and we're gonna continue it by making this incredibly over the top glasses case made out of solid walnut, same piece of wood that the glasses are made out of. It has dovetail splines that are made out of maple and the lid is complete with a walnut burl. It's made out of solid walnut, um, just with a walnut veneer on top there. Uh, it is by far the most overdone and ridiculous glasses, ca glasses case on the planet, but I love it. We got some flock, which is just like velvet on the inside, and it's a nice little home for the lovely wood specks to live. First thing we got to do in this project is measure the glasses and find out what size case we need to make. Once we got our measurements, we can start milling down the lumber, cutting it down, and start making this box. And here's the cool part about woodworking, at least in my mind, is that most of it really and truly is just making a box. If you can make a box, you can do most things in woodworking. Now there are things like turning and carving and those sorts of things, but really, especially people who just start out woodworking, they just make boxes and there's nothing wrong with that. This, I'm calling it a glasses case, but all it is is a box. Um, I think there are people who they'd like to get into woodworking or they'd like to get into making things, but they have a mental barrier of these fancy looking things that people make, but just know that it's a box. All this glasses case is, is mitered corners like you're seeing right now, cut 45 degrees on the corners, glued it all up, and then to reinforce it, I just did dovetail splines. You don't have to do dovetail splines. You can shoot a brad nail in there, cover it up with some sawdust and wood glue, and no one's even gonna see that you shot a nail in there. It's just a different way to do things. If you can do four corners, top and bottom, make a box, you can do most things in woodworking. So if you have a mental barrier, you want to try to do woodworking things, man, just start off by making a box. If you have a record collection, make a box for that record collection. If you want to organize your desk, make a desk organizer. There's a reason birdhouses are so popular among woodworkers and especially young starting woodworkers because all birdhouses are are boxes with a roof on it. Really, birdhouses are harder to make than the thing I'm making because you have to add two extra things that meet at a point. So just know this might look fancy. It might have fancy dovetailed blinds on the corners, but it, at its core, all it is is a box. Anyway, thanks for letting me go on that rant. What's happening now is I'm making a dado for the bottom of the box so it can have a floor and my glasses have a place to rest. I made that dado a quarter inch so we got to mill down our lumber a little bit more so we can get down to that quarter inch thickness so it fits in that dado really tight and snug and you can see here that it does and now that I'm happy with how it fits we can cut down the bottom to the final dimension. All right, 
as far as boxes go, that's about all you can ask for right there. That's pretty darn good. So we'll glue that up and our main box frame will be done. This is a nice little trick for gluing up miter corners. Um, this works for this sort of application, but also if you're gonna do wood turning and you're gonna do a segmented bowl or something like that, this works great for that application as well. But what you do is you put blue tape, painter's tape, around the outside of the thing you're gluing. You flip it over and then you put glue in your miter corners. Um, no clamps necessary, your blue tape is gonna be your clamp. And the reason this works is because miter joints aren't that strong. It's an end grain to end grain gluing and end grain to end grain isn't the strongest um, joint you can have. So when you do miters, you do have to reinforce them using, I, like I, I'm using a spline, you can use nails, anything you want really to reinforce your miters. I'm just gonna put one dot of glue on each part of that base. Um, it is solid wood, so it's going to expand and contract, and it's gonna expand and contract from that middle point. So that middle point's never gonna move, but everything to the outside of that will. And if that starts moving, that could move things in the box and it could kinda of not tear it apart, but I could get some gaps over time and I don't want that to happen. So I already have the data in there. That bottom's not going to move. All that glue is going to do is make sure that that bottom doesn't rattle. It's not there for strength. It's not there for anything else. It's just so it doesn't rattle and doesn't move side to side. Here you can see how well that blue tape trick worked. We still got glue squeeze out, still have to wipe it away after it appears. And you're gonna see me do my little straw trick on the inside part of this um, to wipe away that excess. I'm not super concerned about getting that super clean just because I am gonna put flock on the inside of that and that's just that powdered velvet essentially. So you're not gonna see the inside part of it. You're not gonna feel the inside part of it. So I wasn't too concerned with the excess glue there. So we want six and a long three quarter and two and five eighths. What you saw there was me measuring for the inside dimension of the box lid. I want the um, box lid to have a little lip that comes down just so it, the box lid would stay on there if it did get jostled around or something like that. So there you can see it's a good fit both directions. And then we're gonna make a, essentially we're gonna make walnut edge banding around this entire thing now. So this is gonna be the bottom of um, the box lid, that walnut that's getting cut now. And the core is gonna be plywood, so. We want the outside to be seven and seven eighths by three and three quarter. Seven and seven eighths by three and three quarter. What that measurement told me was how thick the outside edge banding of the lid needed to be. So once I got that number, I could cut down the walnut and start making the edge banding for the, well, edges of the box lid. Mm. 
it's kind of hard to explain this process, but this piece that I'm holding right now is going to get glued to the plywood lid and I'm marking where my next cut needs to be. To me, it's a lot easier to mark than cut than to measure and cut. Measuring will get you close, marking which will get you perfect. So I just repeated that process three more times after I got my first one. And you can see how it's all gonna come together around that plywood base for the lid. And then I'm gonna have a veneer, the walnut burl veneer for the top. And I want that to be flush with the actual top. So I'm taking a different piece of veneer, cutting it to the size that I need. And then that's gonna sit underneath as I glue everything up just so I have the correct depth for the walnut burl veneer when it's time to put that on. So right now I'm just gonna put that underneath like you saw there, glue everything up, and then that veneer will be free to come off once everything is dry with the glue. And then we can put the real walnut burl on. But before we can get to the walnut burl veneer, we have to let the glue dry. And while the glue is drying on the lid, we're gonna move back to our box and cut in those dovetail splines. So what you saw there was the dovetail router bit. This is a router sled specifically designed for making splines. So right now we're just checking to make sure we're gonna get the spline where we want it to hit. We're gonna fire the bad boy up, cross our fingers that nothing blows out or gets broken and see what we can do. The first two look good, so then I just repeated that process three more times, and then after that it was time to make the actual spline part, which I had to do a few trial and errors on some scrap pieces of wood, but once I got it dialed in, we could get some maple out, get the maple um, dovetailed, and then you're going to see that this fit is as good as you could want with a dovetail. And then here's the nice snug fit I was talking about earlier. It takes just enough pressure to get in there. It's not gonna come out, um, especially with the glue. And it's really gonna reinforce those corners to make sure that they stay strong. And then it's just about putting in six more. After all the splines were in, we could take the project over to the belt sander and then sand everything flush and that's when this whole project really starts to take shape. Here you can get that first look of just how good that dovetail spline looks. I mean, walnut and maple together is just a classic look in woodworking. And then you add the dovetail in there, it just looks fantastic in my opinion.
And once I was happy with where the box was, we could move back to the lid. This is that walnut burl I was talking about. Gorgeous piece of veneer. And all we're doing here is just cutting it down to the size of the lid top. After I got everything sanded, it was time to prepare the box for the flocking. And all flocking is, is the first layer is this paint slash glue type thing. So you want to tape off the edges where you're not going to, where you don't want to get your essentially paint. So the paint slash glue, as you see, is black and you want that thick. It's self-leveling, so you don't got to worry about that. And then right after you apply it, once you get done applying it, you want to take that can tube that you see there and that's filled with a whole bunch of little micro velvet powder thing and you just want to coat the inside with as much of that as you can. Uh, you don't want to dump it on there because that's not going to work. You want to use this little tube thing and it works really well. You want to coat it super well uh, because it's going to get you almost a perfect velvet finish. If anyone you know has ever had a jewelry box, a nice jewelry box of any sort, and it had a velvet type thing on the inside, that's what this is. It was flock, and it just gives things a great velvety feel. And now it's time for the last step, which is to apply some finish. This is just some Danish oil. Uh, I definitely did not want to do or use a film finish on this. I wanted this to look as natural wood as possible. And that's what this um, Danish oil is gonna do for me. There's not gonna be any layer of film on there. This is just gonna soak into the wood and it's gonna harden the wood a little bit and it's gonna give this wonderful, real natural wood look, which I really like for light use um, items. Obviously a coffee table or things like that, you're gonna wanna use a film finish like a polyurethane but something you know is not gonna get scratched or dented or anything like that. These non-film penetrating finishes are wonderful. And that'll do it for this project. I appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, throw a like on it. And if you wanna see more projects like this, please consider subscribing.